told him that, you know, you gave it your all, but um, you kind of felt it today. Can you just kind of explain what you were feeling, if there was any fatigue, or how would you describe kind of what was there? Yeah, I would just say my arm was dead. I could tell when I was warming up, I would, it, you know, I would, it was still tired. Um, and I've been in the situation before, you know, and you don't always go out there and pitch you know, full, full strength. Um, usually in those situations, kind of, you know, once you get past pitch 45, you know, sometimes it kind of loosens up and you're able to get deeper into a game. Um, but after, you know, that third inning, um, you know, it didn't loosen up. It was, it was still, you know, it was more tightening up. So I could tell that I was, gonna, you know, my pitch count was going to be limited. I wasn't going to be able to get truly deep into a game. I wasn't going to get to that 9,500 pitch count. Um, knew it was, it was going to be sooner than that. Um, you know, after the fourth inning, you know, I was like, hey, if this is a long inning, you're going to have to pull me. Um, but if it's a quick inning, I can go back out there. And, uh, you know, that's when, you know, we, we looked at the lineup and said, all right, I got Swanson, the pinch hitter. And then um, at that point, I knew I wasn't going to be better than Vestia. Vestia was going to be better against the lefties than I was going to be. So you got to know your, for me, uh, I have to know the bullpen, who those guys are, who's coming in, uh, because then I can I can honestly answer the question, you know, if I'm good or not. And in that situation, I knew, uh, you know, Vestia was going to be better than me. Next question. Kirsten, follow up. Yeah, and just on Alex Vestia, how big were those strikeouts for him? Oh man, he, he, I mean, I, we've I, you know my time here, I've gotten to see him pitch. He, he's he's explosive. You know, he's got a bounce in his step, and you can go out there and, and pitch really well. So, um, you know, I knew in that situation he was the best man for the for the job, and uh, you know he's got a great great fastball and a great breaking ball, so he can go out there and attack you, and, and he can do great things. Okay, in the middle of the room, JP. Yeah, Max, you threw in game five of the NLDS rather than throwing your bullpen between starts, came back out. Now we're seeing Julio didn't throw his bullpen, pitched in relief today. Um, how comparable are those two uh, situations, and, and was there any deleterious effect by going into the game rather than the bullpen? Um, Julio was coming from a smaller pitch count. So uh, I was coming from 110 to relief appearance to game two. Uh, um, he's coming from probably 60 pitches, uh, you know, thrown in game five to a relief appearance. So it, he's going to have an easier uh, recovery um, coming from that. Uh, my, the reason I wanted, you know, I knew I had history pitching on, on two days rest. You know, when I, in 2019, I relieved in game two uh, and then started in game four, and I was able to go 109 pitches that game. I mean, my mom was dead after that one. But, um, you know, I knew if I had to re realistically guess what my pitch count was going to be today based on that experience, I thought it was going to be 95 pitches. Unfortunately, it wasn't. So um, you got to look at the, the pitch counts over the past couple starts to really evaluate um, how you recover. And so for Julio, he's coming from a different spot, a lower pitch count. So you can bet that he's going to have a fresher arm um, um, and and uh, he should be full goal uh, when he gets to start. Go to the left here to Dave. Max, through all your experiences, do you feel like you'll be able to bounce back when the next time calls upon? Yeah, that, when I'm dealing with just, you know, arms dead, it, it wasn't like I'm dealing with tendons or ligaments or, you know, nothing, you know, nothing, you know, no, I wasn't dealing with red flag injuries. It was just, you know, my arm's tired. Um, you know, I, I went out there and pitched as well, as, as much as I could today. Um, so, yeah, you know, usually in these situations, if your arm's dead, your change-up's a little bit better. So I was trying to get some change-ups in there early. Um, and so that it, for me, it was just trying to locate pitch and navigate a lineup. Anything else for Max? Kelly? Hey, Max, you've seen a lot of this team over the years. What strikes you, if anything, that's different for them right now, um, whether it be the growth of, like, an Austin Riley or just some of the additions they, they got at the deadline? I mean, this has always been a tough hitting lineup team, uh, you know, and this lineup is, you know, from top to bottom, they can and they can put the bat to the ball and they can do great things. And, you know, I, I'm not shocked by what they're doing, you know, how, how, how they're hitting. Um, but, I mean, when you're in the NLCS, you're going to be facing great teams and great lineups and great pitching. That's just the way it is. You're not going to face an easy – there's not going to be a free out anywhere. So, um, it, this, this is Major League Baseball at this time of year. In the middle of the room, Bill. All right, so walk-off winners come in all shapes and sizes. We get a pair of them here, back-to-back -back days. Austin Riley in game one. Uh, the young, fresh-faced kid delivering a shot down the left field line. Eddie Rosario, meanwhile, just hitting a sharp one up the middle. All sorts of trouble for Corey Seager, who might not have had a good look at the thing. However you want to stack it up, it's a 2-0 series lead advantage. At
Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.